I sit on the front edge of a firm cushion that maintains the curve in my lower back. One forearm is pressed into the hollow of soft tissue beside her trochanter, the other into the top of her shoulder where it is softest. When she breathes, my arms are pushed apart, my chest opens, and my breath is drawn up. When I breathe out, I stay in the emptiness at the bottom of the breath, doing nothing. Each time my arms are pushed apart, I am drawn up out of that emptiness. I drop deeper and deeper into each time. It is the base of our core. I've learned floating others at my heart that it too is a center of our core and that movement is drawn out of it into our arms when we hold someone in stillness. In some places, after I'm drawn up with a breath, my arm is drawn out into movement, a movement that engages my body. I explore leaning into different places on the way around to the lower back. In each, I am drawn up with the breath. In some, I am drawn out beyond the breath. I clasp the shoulder between my forearms and rock back and roll engaging my whole body. I reach under her arm and lay it back over my thigh. One forearm leans into the hollow where it started from, while the other leans into the hollow in the chest just before the shoulder. In India, these places are considered gates where the spirit enters. We call them the body gate and the heart gate. Leaning into both gates, movement is drawn out by arms that engages my body even more. We start with our forearms because they can come directly from our core without the kind of involvement the brain has in our hands. But now that our core is engaged, our hands can also come from it. While one arm holds her chest open, one hand is drawn from my core to her heart. Once there, instead of being drawn into movement, I feel drawn into stillness. My hand stays there in that stillness. My other hand is drawn to her face, not to massage it or work points, but just to be there, to acknowledge how her head, too, is part of the wholeness I have felt holding her core. My hand is drawn to two or three more places on her head. It arrives in the biggest hollow under the occipital ridge, the mind gate.
My other hand leaves its place at the heart's stillness and pulls her shoulder. I rotate her shoulder, gripping it with both hands. Leaning in with both hands, I press her arm to the core. lifting under and holding it lying over both hands. I focus on how, as I am drawn up with a breath, her arm becomes lighter. As it becomes weightless, I am drawn into a movement that continues moving up with it beyond the breath, exploring whatever stretches and movement I feel drawn up into a progression, not a sequence, brought us to this point, which is no longer a progression, but a free exploration. Placing the arm stretched up over her head presents new opportunities, new access. Drawn to open her newly presented side, I cross my arms and push apart shoulder and hip. Her waist invites another kind of holding. I am drawn to other parts of her body. Lifting her arm again, I am drawn up even higher, a rising, an ascension continuing beyond the breath, in which I work her hand with both hands, being pulled up with it as high as I can reach and beyond. I move my heart out to my knee and lower her hand onto it. My other hand returns to her heart. I lay the arm out in front, and with one hand still holding her heart, my other reaches down to hold her hara just below the navel. Holding both, I feel them become one as I drop into the emptiness at the bottom of the breath. The hand comes from the heart to replace the hand on the hara as it moves to hold the hara from the back. 
The base is now contained from three sides, the hands at front and back, and the leg at the bottom. The leg that supports throughout the session, maintaining the containment that creates safety. One hand stays at the front of the hara, while the other vibrates the body gain. I swing up the leg and find the point where it balances. I gradually move it around that point of balance, finding my own point of balance. Just as I explored the weightlessness of the arm, the lightness that draws us up, now I explore the heaviness of the leg the weight that grounds us as I stretch and clasp and rotate it. I prop her foot behind her. Her newly presented back invites and draws my hands to explore up and down it. I get up, I bring her legs up, I press her knees towards the chest, keeping the sacrum flat on the floor. I roll her to the other side and enter a mere image. Since all the moves have been named and described on the first side, what you will hear on this side is a meditation that can be shared with others on the Tansu Yoga path. Sit with your hands palms up on your legs. Close your eyes. Notice whatever part of your body wants to move. Let it. Welcome whatever movement appears now or during the sitting. Movement is life. When the movement feels complete for the moment, settle down into the emptiness the bottom of the breath. Each time your breath is drawn up, it goes out into every part of your body. Let all those parts settle and empty into the emptiness at the bottom of the breath. Notice any part that doesn't let go as much as the rest.
The next time your breath is drawn up, fill that part even more. And as you breathe out, let everything drop into the emptiness. Each time you breathe out, drop a little deeper into that emptiness and stay a little longer. Notice how when your breath is drawn up and fills your chest, it slowly pushes your shoulders apart. And how those shoulders draw even more slowly back together as you drop back into the emptiness. Again and again, so simultaneous, you can no longer tell if the breath is moving them apart or their moving apart is drawing the breath up, drawing you up out of the base of your core. Notice how when your chest is the fullest, the breath finds a home in the other center of your core, your heart, the center of our connection to others. Feel that connection to someone you love in your heart. Notice whatever tendency to reach out and hold the beloved draws you out your arms and lifts them just a little. Notice how whatever is drawn out your arms from your heart is no longer timed to the breath, has no beginning and no end, and how the more there is drawn out your arms, the more your whole body becomes engaged in their dance. Dance. Slowly lower your arms and settle back down into the emptiness at the bottom of the breath. Just as our core has a center at our base that our breath is drawn up from, and our heart a center that we are drawn out from, there are times our whole core is drawn up beyond the breath. Bring your hands up to the top of your core, just in front of your shoulders, palms up, ready to lift someone up. Each time the breath is drawn up into them, your hands lift a little higher, higher, and higher. Until they lift you up into the light into a dance beyond the breath. This, too, is a dance without end. Dance. Slowly lower your arms and settle back down. Drop a little deeper into the emptiness at the bottom of the breath. The whole area around our base, the navel, the front, the sacrum, the back, the perineum, the bottom, is a bowl at the base of the spine. And every time we breathe out, everything empties into that bowl. When everything has emptied into it, the bowl itself empties into that point at the bottom, which is where everything returns into the void. This, too, is a dance. Just as we found a dance on the way out beyond the breath, and another dance on the way up, here is the dance on the way down. And it may seem we are dancing backwards, but it is what grounds us, what continues to connect us to all our beginnings.
I moved to the feet and, clasping the ankles, pulled them. I lean into the feet, stretching them to the outside. I work my way up to the arms without losing contact. I cross the arms and, holding below the wrist, pull them. Holding the occiput, I pull the head. I cover the eyes. I place one hand on the heart center and the other, very lightly, on the third eye. Focusing on what is rising up my own spine, I lift both hands. I sit feeling how we are still connected, though no longer touching. 